At the Dutch Grand Prix, there's something very curious going on on all of the Formula One cars, or at least some of them up and down the grid. The rear view mirrors look very, very strange to trained eyes, and actually to the untrained eye, they also look particularly strange. To work out exactly what's going on, I'm joined here by Craig Scarborough. Now, Craig, what on earth is going on with some of these cars as we look at the Red Bull? Well, actually, this Red Bull shot tells us exactly what's going on. You can have a look at the traditional mirror on this side of the car, exactly what we expected, the usual size mirror they've had for many years in Formula One now. Over on your side, you've got something completely different. You now have this large mirror pod and it has less aerodynamics. But the point is, is that Formula One and the FA are testing with the drivers larger mirror glasses, more larger reflective surfaces to see if that works better for them, given better rearward visibility. So this weekend is when they get a chance to test this. Now, this is something that hasn't been fully thrashed out in the technical regulations. And you can see, depending on which team you look at, how committed each team is to the new designs. Red Bull quite curiously decided to go for this Quasimodo layout <laughs> with the left-hand mirror, the full-size 2023 specification maybe, but the standard right-hand mirror. So that must have given them slightly imbalanced airflow. These mirrors look incredibly draggy and don't look particularly optimized when you look at the standard Red Bull mirror. But to give a comparison to the sheer size difference between these mirrors, the Red Bull isn't the best example. If we go on to take a look at Alpha Tauri, this is Yuki Tsunoda's car in the garage at uh, the head of free practice one. And you can see the standard mirror housing, the drag reducing aerodynamic element above it. And as we look around, you can just see how that mirror housing interacts with the rest of the car. You come back round and you'll see the mirror glass sitting there. And this is the, what the FIA are really looking at. Is this mirror glass just here as big as it truly needs to be? So will the drivers get enough visibility out the back of that glass? Well. This is the version that was fitted to Pierre Gasly's car. Just look at the sheer size difference. It's so much longer. It's probably, I don't know, a good 50% difference in size. If you look back at the Yuki Tsunoda version and then compare it back to Pierre Gasly, it's absolutely massive. Now, Craig, that's an enormous drag penalty. It is a, an increased drag penalty. Um, and you wonder whether the teams have fit so much aerodynamics to this now. Actually having a larger mirror house and allows them to have larger fins and things. Maybe that might even work in their advantage. I don't know. You'd have to go and have a look at the CFD. But the other interesting thing is there seems to be two sizes of mirrors teams are trialing. This one is just merely wider and the one as we saw there earlier on the Red Bull is deeper as well. So I think they're playing about with different options uh, to see what works best. And as we come around here you can actually see we call it a mirror. It's actually perspex with a mirrored background. It's not glass obviously for you know, obvious safety reasons. But yeah, does having a bigger mirror actually give you a bigger, better rear view because of the rear wing, the rear tyres and everything else going on? So this is an interesting test and I'd be interested to hear what the driver's feedback on this is. Well, absolutely. We haven't heard anything from the drivers so far on it, but I think we'll hear a bit more later on. But obviously 2022 has much larger rear tyres on the cars and that is a factor. But I thought we'd take a look at a different car. Take a look at the Williams here. These are the, this is the much larger mirror housing that you were talking about earlier, Craig on the Williams, but something else that is larger as a result of larger housings, and you did mention this, are the supports. And we'll take a bigger look at that on some of the other cars. But the larger supports, and these are aerodynamic parts, they're mm -hmm. using these to tune the airflow back over the rear of the car. Yeah, they're, they're a really useful piece of real estate of bodywork on the car to play with. So again, the more space you get, including the pod itself, the more opportunity you've got for playing with things, despite the fact that there will be some kind of a drag penalty, but equal across all of the teams. If you just want to stop that there, one of the other interesting things, I was actually asked this during the week, is the mirror glass can be curved or flat, and it depends on the team and the driver, how they play about with that mirrored surface. And something else that I think is worth looking at, Craig, it looks to me here that the mirror glass doesn't completely fit at the bottom of the mirror housing. Now, I don't think that's an accident. I think that's something Williams are playing with just to try to see if there's any aerodynamic advantage that they can glean from the base of that mirror housing. And we're gonna look a little bit more in detail at some of the alternate layouts the teams are trying. Here's the standard Williams layout. And I just wanted to bring this clip up because you can see that mirror support underneath the pod, but I wanted to bring this round because unusually when we shot this footage, the mirror glass wasn't actually fitted into the housing on either side of the Williams. 
and that's something we don't normally get to see. So just to explain what's inside the mirror housing other than the mirror glass, well, the answer to that question is absolutely nothing. In this case. Exactly. Because normally what they would have inside here would be a thermal camera, and we've spoken about this on Tech Talk before, looking at the tyre. Equally, the pressure and temperature sensor inside the tyre. Sometimes the aerial is inside here as well. So it's a useful place to mount stuff that's related to tyres uh, as well as the mirror itself. And it's actually very interesting to me that the Williams housing here has no connectors, no opportunity for the team to be able to connect anything into that housing behind the mirror glass. When I did a little bit of work experience at the Williams team back in 1997, one of the jobs I had to do was fit various electronic components inside that housing on Jacques Villeneuve and Heinz Harald Frentzen's cars and then put the mirror glass in. So you're right, they do use it for electronic housings as well. But something that's really jumped out at me is how much the teams have invested in these experimental mirrors, something that you perhaps wouldn't expect to see. Here's the standard Aston Martin mirror housing. It's quite an advanced design. They've got little elements and it's something they've been working on extensively all the way through the season, Craig. They've had these little slots, these little cutouts and a single support in there. So that has taken them quite a long time to optimise, hasn't it? It has. It's a huge piece of work because it affects the airflow all the way down the side pods and then it gets to the, the beam wing and the diffuser. So while it may seem a very small piece, it's very influential on the airflow back down the car. So teams can get a real advantage, which is why you get such complicated setups as this. And obviously that then opens up the question of what would you do when you've then got that mirror, bigger mirror glass there. And considering the parts that are being put on the car for this Grand Prix weekend at Zandvoort, only used in free practice, take a look at Aston Martin's experimental part. Look at the complexity of this part. You've got these twin supports on the main housing. You've got this much longer aerodynamic element in here. And clearly the drag reducing components are all fitted along with this very large mirror stay as well. Now Craig, this is a sure sign that Aston Martin feel fairly confident that this level of complexity is what's going to be allowed next year. It is, and again, this is a classic example of teams taking advantage of opportunities given to them by the FA to test these things, which you wouldn't normally be allowed to do during uh, a race weekend. What fascinates me about this is that Aston Martin have been able to prepare aerodynamically this concept at the right size, but they've also been able to produce it. This is all 3D printed. There's some carbon down here and there's some metal here. So you've got three different materials all having to be bonded together to suddenly make, at relatively short notice, this mirror housing. So teams really do react very quickly to the opportunities that they get given. And it's quite a lot of work that's gone into that. So some teams have also come up with their own bespoke police pieces. Here on the Haas, it's clearly 3D printed, but actually, this is the standard Haas layout that's just been elongated. You have this long central section just here, which you see on a number of cars over a number of years. And this is triangular that sits inside that housing. But what those little slots are doing above and below that triangle is actually drag reduction. It's something that's quite effective and a number of teams have been experimenting over the years. And you can see where that air from the front of it goes really nicely in this shot. You can see these just openings along here that let the air from the front bleed out and come backwards. It looks really minor, but it's meant to be a substantial drag reduction. Yeah, it's uh, something that was adopted widely. It seemed to have been fallen out of fashion, but brought back again this year by Haas. So it just shows you even old ideas can get a new life in Formula One. Well, the 2023 season has essentially already started when it comes to the free practice session at the 2022 Dutch Grand Prix. These mirrors are the first sign of the new cars and the new look regulations that are coming, even though some of those changes are pretty subtle.